Well, here we are at the end of game turn one, so the end of the first, uh, the first, is it four turns in a year or months? I don't know, I forget. There's the winter months, that's right. So there's several turns in a year. It starts, April runs through to September, then you have the winter one and two. So yeah, first turn of 166 is what we're doing. And quite a lot of action for the first turn, and it may have been ill-advised on both sides, but we'll see in the long run what happens. We decided, I decided to run the campaign and use the uh, special rules for the barbarian invasion and the plague. And this caused, as you saw if you were watching the other videos, uh, pretty devastating losses for the Romans and also uh, equivalent proportional losses for the barbarian slash Parthian empires. And the invasion also activated several units and I elected to pull those units randomly as opposed to uh, you know choosing each one and just to kind of keep it fair. But in the end I think you know, there's probably more value in having a higher combat values than pulling, say, a, uh, a three-factor heavy, a three-factor heavy infantry unit from the barbarian force, which in combat would double to six. You're just as well off having a ten-factor levy unit. You know. So anyway, let's have a look at what happened. <coughs> so we had these. Uh, these barbarian forces lay out uh, based on the activations that we saw up across that line there, those yellow blocks. You can see up there there's four tribes that decided to join this uh, invasion, plus the New Caledonian, New Caledonian side did that last time, the Caledonian uh, forces as well. And Romans moved first, we moved some units from here to there to reinforce that section of the map. Uh, now, Caledonians may come around, but I'm not too fussed about that. We have to ship over here so that we can bring up, bring some forces across just to reinforce over here in case things get out of hand. Although, based on what I'm seeing so far, I don't think it will. Romans moved uh, nothing along this area here, but certainly did consolidate some forces here and then popped into this hex to attack a uh, levy unit that was recruited. So we're actually in a recruiting station there. Now, I'm not gonna make this a long video, but there are several little sections of rules that are not 100% clear to me, and nor can I find any real explanation for them in the game, and that does kind of take away from things a little bit. Okay, that said, uh, the rest of the, these forces here that, that got to here used river movement, so they may have started here, for instance, and then we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 movement points. I could have actually gone, uh, these weren't here, so I could have gone uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 to there if I had wanted to, you know, that type of thing. River movement's kind of cool. Uh, over in this area, uh, really just pushing forces this way to uh, try and set, you know, sally forth and bring some force to bear in one significant pile with a leader so that we can have a go at these guys over here uh, and take on the Parthian forces. Now, if you recall our victory conditions are the conversion of two Parthian cities I believe and then also these black circled cities there that have to be colonized which <coughs> means I'm going to have to have several specific units in place. This impetus here, which is kind of like a supply function, I've got to have that, a leader, and a legion, a five-step unit, a five-factor unit in the location, and then convert that unit into a civis, which is a garrison, and that will allow us then to say that is ours. And then the only way that we could lose that, obviously, is if the the, the uh, barbarians attacked it and, and took it <coughs> and converted it back. Not sure how it gets converted back other than eliminating, eliminating the civis unit and then occupying it would then give, give you control. 
and then you would therefore not it would not be a a colony anymore so we would have to go through that exercise again so you can see that could be very expensive so there may be some value in waiting until the last or second last year and then trying to convert these units all in one shot uh, not one one in one year perhaps right we can use some force march and other stuff to try and move twice and make things happen so that's what the Romans did so they conducted one attack it was an overwhelming uh, attack I probably had four legions in here the combat factors double uh, it was pretty brutal so certainly overkill there I now know more about how much I need to conduct an effective attack you do want to tag along some of these smaller units uh, in case you are required to lose two or five or whatever the case may be due to uh, missile combat. And we'll get to that in a sec. Okay, so then the uh, the Barbarians and the Parthians really, Parthians really didn't do anything this turn terribly much. They didn't roll well for movement. You've got to roll each turn to see who can move and how far they can move and what happens to them when they move. Uh, so it's similar to the Carthage Richard Burke's system where you can in, in his system you can move as far as you want the consequence there is that you have attrition uh, and if you move the wrong way you, you or go the wrong way you can incur more attrition here uh, road movement is faster obviously enough <coughs> but depending on what number you roll it's going to determine whether or not you may scatter one hex. Uh, I don't know how you scatter. Uh, I guess maybe your enemy decides where you move to. Um, and the other thing is, if it's a winter turn, you can suffer attrition, which could mean losing a unit. So as the barbarians, you're probably not going to want to move in the winter time, and you are going to want to be in a city location or a, a colony location because the cost is going to be very high. Because you know, like here, I've got three levy units of 10 factors, you're gonna to have to lose one unit if you roll wrong and when you're trying to move. That's it's pretty devastating. That'd be a 30% 30, 30 of your force. Okay, so barbarians moved some forces uh, and consolidated and attacked here. They were rebuffed. They uh, lost a small cavalry unit and due to missile fire and then they were disrupted as a result of the attack and I'll explain what all that means combat is pretty straightforward there are three phases first phase is missile fire the second phase is the assault phase and the third phase is the pursuit phase missile phase you simply take this number of, of four you roll on the same combat table and you see what you get and it might say no losses but uh, a C which is kind of like a morale check uh, then you uh, could conduct that result. You then go to the assault uh, phase and everyone adds all their factors up. These guys attack. And then you then go to the pursuit phase and then you're done. The guy, you, the way you choose who fights first is you have to have what's called tactical advantage. And that's gonna be a function of leadership, in which case here there was none. There's no leadership. Uh, and secondly, uh, you then roll D6, right? So you roll a D6 and add it to the leadership. And that is gonna drive the who, who fights first. And if I fight first, then that means that this guy is gonna take losses and those losses are netted out before we conduct this attack, before they get to attack. So in this instance, the, the uh, barbarians fought first did no damage, these guys uh, fired their uh, missiles, destroyed a small cavalry unit that had to take two step losses, so it was better to take uh, that as two and lose it versus losing a 10. And then these guys attacked, and although they didn't uh, make any losses occur, they did force a morale check, and that ended up being a go uh, result versus a pass result, and that meant that there was that these guys become disrupted. Now, if you become disrupted, basically, and you're in the combat phase, basically what that means is that you are combat ineffective for the rest of the combat cycle. So if we hadn't have fought already, 
we would not have been able to combat any of those units uh, in, in that given turn, that given uh, combat. Pretty straightforward stuff. There are, use, the use of stratagem markers is also involved in this, so I can, I can pick and choose, I can use uh, pay with stratagem markers to uh, influence the result or apply tactics if I get a certain combat result. And th those combat results will drive the, those chits may drive the losses up or down depending on, on what's going on. So, overall, uh, one, two attacks by the barbarians for the turn, some movement, nothing going on up there in Caledonia, uh, nothing, uh, a little bit of combat here, and some force consolidation there. We did uh, not siege, but we assaulted this uh, town here, Trapezum, I think it's called, and had a no result, so they all stay in place there. And I haven't put all the units out, but every red square has a civis unit in it. I don't believe there are enough in the game for the combined game to actually put one on every hex. So I have uh, resorted to stating there, there ain't one, if there ain't one there, consider that there is one there. And when they're eliminated, uh, we'll, we'll use blocks or some other marker to denote that uh, they have been eliminated. Maybe we'll just mark on the map there. All right, so that's kind of the first turn. Interesting, got some confusion over stratagem markers and how they work. The very first turn, both sides lost all their stratagem markers because of the plague, so we weren't able to use them, so we haven't really had any chance to experience them. Uh, there are ways to gain more, but I believe the Romans start with all of the stratagem markers that actually exist. Uh, there were eight uh, they, they started with, and we gained one for a victory, that's nine, and there are a total of nine that I can find in the game set. So I'm not sure what the point is in uh, allocating additional strategy markers for control of cities, victory in battle, and stuff like that. So victory in battle has become kind of a moot point once you're Marcus Aurelius and you already have a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Not sure what's going on there. I'm going to have another look through the, the counter mix and see if I can find any additional strategy markers. Okay, that's a little wrap for you. I thought you might like to see what was going on there. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.